Hello, hello. It is time for me to tell you what I think the One Piece is. Uh, I have had this theory kicking around in my head for a couple months now. Uh, I've mentioned it in some of the individual chapter videos, and then last night I was talking about it in a Discord server, and I was like, yeah, I've never really totally broken down why I think this or presented it anywhere, uh, so I thought, why not? Let's uh, break it down, you know? I'm not, like, usually a big One Piece theorist. Uh, you know, I have a lot of admiration for those people. You can really dive deep into the series, but it's just not how I typically engage. At the same time, though, I feel like every One Piece raider has to have somewhere their own pet theory of what the One Piece actually is, and here is mine. Okay, let's build it up here. What do we know about the One Piece? Uh, first off, it's something material. Uh, it's not something conceptual, you know, it kind of bugs me when people who clearly don't read the series are like, oh, I bet the One Piece is like friendship, or it's love, or it's something, you know, immaterial like that. Uh, but Oda has straight up promised that it is a reward for this adventure. Uh, that it is not some sort of incorporeal thing, but it is a, an object that you get once you get to the end of the Grand Line. Uh, there was this famous interview um, where somebody asked, just straight up. <laughs> uh, Oda, of course, way back from the start of the series, has known how it was going to end. He has always known what the One Piece was. Uh, and this person straight up asked them, hey, it's not like the growth in your heart. And Oda's like, no, 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 no. It's got to be an actual reward. It's a material reward. Okay. It's also something funny. This is something we learned more recently during Odin's flashback that when Roger and his crew arrived at Laugh Tale, uh, saw what the One Piece was, they beheld it en masse, and they laughed. And keep in mind, this is after they had already learned the tragic story of the Void Century, the annihilation of the Kingdom of D, uh, the rise of the tyrannical world government, all this stuff, they knew all of that, but they still found whatever the One Piece was surprising, and it made them burst into laughter. And also, they recognized it as something that Joy Boy had left behind. Roger says specifically, you know, what an amazing journey, or something like that, that you've left for us, Joy Boy. So these are pretty important clues as well. And we know even more recently, and this is one of the things that really motivated me to kind of think about this a lot, uh, One Piece is something that gives you control over the fate of the world. And this uh, was told to us by Vegapunk in his dying message, that the fate of the world now rests in the hands of the one who finds it to the person who claims to the one, lays claim to the One Piece, okay? Uh, so... The, the phrasing specifically, and the fact that this is juxtaposed by all of these different little character portraits of people who are vying for the One Piece, makes it seem like once you have control of the One Piece, you have to make some sort of choice. It's not like, it doesn't matter who gets to it, just whoever gets to it does ABC. It's like, you are in control of something based on your own discretion once you have control of One Piece. Uh, or it may just empower you in some way to bring about your own dreams or fantasies or whatever, but I think there's a really strong emphasis on, like, if Luffy gets the One Piece versus Blackbeard gets the One Piece versus Shanks gets the One Piece versus the world government, whatever, it's all going to have, like, different outcomes, is, is my feeling by the way this is presented, the way this is worded. Um, okay. So what do I not think it will be? I don't think it will be anything that we've already seen or been told about. I don't think Oda will give us any explicit confirmation or even too many explicit clues right up until that final moment when the Straw Hats are on Laugh Tale. Uh, I just think that would be too anticlimactic. And I don't think he wants it to be in a position where people are like, okay, it's narrowed down to it's got to be like one of three things. I don't think it's going to be so simple, you know. I don't think we're going to see it coming to that extent. Uh, so yeah, not an ancient weapon, not the real pony glyph, not the giant straw hat that we saw down in Marijoa, uh, none of these things. I don't even think it'll be, like, in a category of things we've seen before. 
like the giant straw hat people expect that joy boy was a giant and he wore that way back in the day and that maybe he has other giant things left behind and one of those is one piece i don't think so i, I think it'll be categorically different than anything we've seen before so i don't think it's like an ultimate devil fruit either or even like the tree that produces devil fruits i think that would just be too like iterative and too much like uh how do i put it like uh okay well given everything you would expect that this thing exists i think it will be something that people don't even expect exists because all the stuff that we expect exists like some hypothetical devil tree fruit or some ultimate devil fruit or whatever it's kind of like we're waiting to see it even if it doesn't exist we're still waiting to see it and so if that was one piece i think it would still be kind of anticlimactic because it's like oh yeah i kind of figured something like that might exist uh, so, more in detail, I really don't think it's going to be a weapon, because uh, I don't think they're going to find the One Piece and then have a big battle. I, I feel like that would just throw kind of the whole theming and spirit of the series out the window if they went to Laugh Tale and then they had to fight Blackbeard or the world government or whatever. I think the big, big battle will be to get access to Laugh Tale. That it, the, the winner of that battle, whether it's because they now possess all the road pony glyphs or just they get the other people out of the way or whatever it is, uh, Laugh Tale will be the reward for winning that major climactic war. Uh, and so I, I, it doesn't make sense to me to do all of that and be like, oh my god, it's like Pluton. Or, oh my god, it's like... Sola, the even more powerful ancient weapon that's the boss of all other ancient weapons. Because it's like, well, we already won. <laughs> so what are we going to do with this? I just think that would be, you know, kind of a letdown. I also don't think it's anything to do with history. I know for a long time, a leading theory that I, I kind of bought into was that the One Piece was the Rio Poneglyph. Uh, that once you get to Laugh Tale, you get to learn just the entire history of the world. Um, but Roger and his crew already knew everything by the time they got there. This knowledge exists in other places. Uh, and I think Luffy and company will as well, uh, given that the final showdowns are likely to be against the world government. I don't know, maybe it's Blackbeard, maybe it's Shanks. There's different schools of thought, but certainly one of the major climactic showdowns will be against like Emu and the Gorosei and stuff. And I think at that point, you want to know all of these tragic flashbacks and understand the Void Century and understand all of the evil things they did to motivate those final showdowns. It wouldn't make sense to wipe out the world government and then be like, wow, and they were really bad. <laughs> like, that's just really putting the cart before the horse. Uh, moreover, it's like, you know, if this allows you to control the fate of the world... It's pretty clear that knowledge does not really give you complete control over the fate of the world. Because <laughs> uh, Raleigh knows everything. And yeah, sure, the world government doesn't like him. And they probably would prefer he doesn't roam around boozing things up with all of this dangerous knowledge. But I don't think he could also like single-handedly spark an entire rebellion against the world government. Or radically change the makeup of the world or anything like that. I, I do not think in any meaningful sense he controls the fate of the world in his hands just because he knows all this stuff. Same with Vegapunk, you know, who did his best to get all this information out there, but they made it really clear to show, okay, a lot of people were, like, surprised by this and shocked by this, but it didn't instigate overnight immediate change. It's not, you know, revolutionizing the world uh, that he knew this stuff and he was getting it out there. Uh, and, like, is this really a reward? <laughs> Oda very specifically says it's a reward for, like, completing the adventure. And it really seems like most of this history is going to be kind of, like, horrific atrocities. Yeah, sure, I guess there's some, like, lost technology and stuff in there, too, which is neat. But I don't know. I, I think especially to Luffy, that little chowder head... He's not going to be like, wow, it's a big book or a big pony glyph that I can't even read. And it contains the history of the entire world. I'm so happy. <laughs> That's not his style. <laughs> okay, so things that I think are likely. Some, some conditions that I think One Piece has to fill in the story that I would be kind of surprised if uh, whatever it is doesn't kind of satisfy these things. I think it's got to be something that drastically affects the entire world. 
Uh, I think if it was just some sort of political power, like, leverage that you get over the world government, or, like, oh, now I get to be in charge of the world government or something, that's too anticlimactic. Because that just sort of has the sense of, oh, well, this might have repercussions in the coming years. <laughs> uh, oh, now Luffy can pass laws or something. Like, it's not a big boom climactic change. Uh, I think it just needs to immediately and majorly alter the entire world as we know it. And I think there needs to be a huge climactic scene in the finale, which is whatever the One Piece is, them, like, using it or taking control of it or, you know, bringing it to bear upon the world, it's not going to be, like, informing people over the phone, sir, he's found the One Piece, oh, crap, that means he's king of the world or whatever. It's going to be something huge and climactic and cinematic and amazing. I think it would be kind of a letdown if the finale didn't have something like that to show the importance and power of One Piece. Uh, it's also going to be something that Luffy wants to do. Like, earlier I said that it seems like the One Piece brings with it some major choice that controls the fate of the world, and that Roger and his crew, when they found it, didn't really seize that opportunity. Like, yes, he was the Pirate King. People every, everywhere called him that. Yes, he sparked revolution with his dying words. Uh, but he didn't overthrow the government. He didn't <laughs> destroy the world. You know, he didn't affect any of these absolutely major changes using the One Piece, right? Uh, whatever major climactic cinematic thing it evokes is something that Roger didn't want to do. But it's going to be something that Luffy wants to do. Because it would be such a huge anticlimax if he received the power to hold the fate of the world in his hands via One Piece, and then was like, nah, I'm just going to leave it as it is. Uh, so yeah, we know at the same time, though, that Roger did say nah. We know that there's some sort of ideological difference between the two. And possibly Joy Boy, way back in implementing this, said nah as well. Like, he also made a choice in leaving One Piece behind. Okay. So it's, it's something where Luffy breaks from these kind of other people he's walking in the footsteps of and seizes this opportunity and makes this drastic change. Uh, yeah, Luffy will be different and actually do whatever it is in the finale. And this, I think, could also motivate a final conflict between Luffy and Shanks. Uh, I feel like... I don't know, this is something that people talk about a lot. Will Luffy and Shanks ever fight? Will they just have, like, a symbolic match? <laughs> Will there be something that causes an actual conflict between them? Um, and I think something like this could be good, because Shanks rode with Roger's crew. He seemingly agrees with the decision to leave it be, whatever it is. He was only motivated to go after the One Piece once he realized that other crews were getting close and may choose something else. Uh, and so I think it won't be obviously like a fight to the death, uh, but this could be an excellent way to have them battle and just kind of satisfy the fans and show that, uh, because ultimately Shanks is like, no, I won't let you go to Laugh Tale because I don't agree with what I think you'll do when you get there. And Luffy's like, what is it? And he's like, you don't want to know. You, th you're going to find out. That's the whole point. And then they, psh, psh, psh. uh, so I think... Because Luffy wants to do it, it's going to have something to do with his mysterious dream. So this is, uh, like, a couple hundred chapters ago. This lovely chapter where Luffy talks about his wonderful dream that uh, happens at the end of his journey. Everyone is shocked, blown away, bursting out laughing. Um, he says it's possible, maybe if I'm the king of pirates, uh, everybody is just blown away that he could even conceive of such a thing. Uh, and what else do we know about Luffy's dream? It must have something to do with being the most free. Uh, every time they talk about the responsibilities of the pirate king and how you're going to be targeted by everybody and it's a heavy, heavy crown... He says, well, I think the Pirate King is going to be the most free person in the world. So it's something to do with that. Uh, it's something funny and bold and unrealistic that nobody can really grapple with. Uh, they can't believe that such a thing would be possible. Um, and it's something to do with a new era. This is from One Piece film Red. Luffy talks about wanting to usher in a new era by becoming the Pirate King 
which we can also assume has something to do with this dream, uh, but we don't know what. Uh, so I think it makes sense that the one piece is going to be something that directly enables this, not in some sort of like roundabout way where he's like, oh, now I'm ultimately god powerful and therefore I can just do this other thing that was difficult, but that the one piece will directly make this possible. And I think, you know, I feel like the finding the One Piece is going to be like the final major event of the series. And so we can kind of think about what it must be in terms of what we think the tone of the ending must be. And I think One Piece is likely to end with a feeling of, and so their adventure continues, you know? I don't think it's going to be tragic or bittersweet. And I don't even think it's going to be too definitive and final. Like, I don't think it's going to be, like, time skip to old Luffy dying or, uh, you know, <laughs> the world gets blown up by a meteor or anything like that. Uh, I think it's going to just be a, a fun, uplifting, you feel so good about the characters, setting them off. They're going to have new adventures in this new era that Luffy has ushered in. Uh, and I think as well, this will be a direct consequence of finding the One Piece, that it's not just them going, okay, that's over and done with, <laughs> we found the One Piece, uh, let's get back on the ship and just have some other adventures. Uh, I think instead, the One Piece will usher in a feeling of total newness and this feeling of, oh, well, now I'm really excited to imagine what sort of adventures they're going to have, given that everything has changed. Okay, so what? What do I think it is? Given all of that, given all of that, what have I arrived at with my, my calculating mind? I think the One Piece is a big drain plug for all the oceans. It's like if all the oceans are a big bathtub, and when you pull this plug out, all of the oceans drain back down, returning the One Piece, the world of One Piece, into this largely land-based planet with all of these flooded continents and ancient kingdoms that are buried at the bottom of the ocean uh, now are at the surface and visible huge continents emerging everything now interconnected by land and putting the world back into one piece and I think that's the joke <laughs> I think that's the big joke that he's been building towards so why do I think this uh, first off, it just kind of satisfies all of the conditions I talked about before. It's huge. I think it'll be a huge physical thing that Luffy has to use strength and hockey to rip out of the ground. It's funny. <laughs> uh, you know, Roger understanding that the world was artificially flooded and that ancient continents slumber beneath and then seeing this giant plug and understanding, oh, hey, <laughs> this will drain the oceans. I think is something that would make him laugh, that will make all of us readers laugh. It certainly gives you power over the fate of the world. You can decide, do you want the world to remain a series of isolated islands scattered around huge oceans, or do you want it to return to big, huge continents? Uh, it would make for an awesome climactic scenes, right? Like all of the oceans draining out of the world simultaneously and all of these ancient kingdoms huge mountain ranges, whatever, just slowly emerging out of the sinking tides. That would look sick nasty. Uh, it's something where certainly a lot of different people would have different perspectives on if they want to do it. You know, like Shanks obviously is very protective. He wants to keep kind of the innocent peoples of the world safe. There's other pirates that have that same sort of perspective, like Whitebeard who might think, you know, as flawed as it is, this sort of scattered island system is better because it creates safe havens and it, you know, finds, uh, it, it creates ways to stop tyrannical power just overtaking everything, which is maybe what Joy Boy's motivation was too. But then there's other people that are like, no, 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 this isolation is bad. What we need is true togetherness and for large communities to come together. That's the, the proper way to fight against evil power. Uh, and then, of course, once the world is drained uh, and the Straw Hats are standing there on the mountain that is now Raftel or however it works, um, it's like, wow, there is now just infinite new adventures, exploring these ancient kingdoms, finding treasure that had been slumbering at the bottom of the seas, 
uh, it certainly would leave it on quite a note to be like, well, the, the era of piracy is over, but now the era of land adventuring has begun. <laughs> uh, and then they set off, and that's your finale. That's your end. It definitely changes the era. Definitively changes the era is what I wrote. Uh, ends the great age of piracy. It ushers in something wholly new that, uh, as Luffy intends to. Uh, some of the reasons why I think this... So it satisfies the prophecy of Luffy destroying Fishman Island. <laughs> uh, because as the oceans drain, Fishman Island, as we know it, as this bubble structure, is going to get wrecked. <laughs> now, I don't think it'll be like a tragic thing. Millions of fishmen dead. But I, it will certainly destroy that island as we know it. And of course, everybody always talks about that like, Oh, it's, it's a twist. He'll destroy Fishman Island because he'll somehow create racial equality and the fishman will be welcomed up back on the surface and see the sun again and therefore he'll destroy it because it's no longer necessary i think that's too wimpy they they said destroy <laughs> and the prophecy is of fishman island in like ruins <laughs> uh so i think this is the a much more like actual cool and impactful way of describing what that prophecy is uh, it integrates, uh, in Vegapunk's last message, the idea that the ocean tides are actually rising. Um, that's, you know, a major crisis that they're facing bit by bit. It seems like the world government is preparing for it just by living up on the top of uh, the red line. There's other pl plans to avoid it, like Vegapunk creating island clouds seems to be a measure to avoid it. Uh, but this just solves it. <laughs> this, like, saves the world from that looming catastrophe uh, by draining the oceans back down to the pre-void century state. Uh, and, and essentially, you know, One Piece is a reward, it's treasure, but it's not treasure right then and there. And, and when Roger said, hey, I, I left it all in One Piece, it may not, meant, may not be that he means it's sitting there on, Raf on Laugh Tale, but that all of the treasures that have been scattered into the oceans... All of the treasures that have fallen off of ships or lived in those ancient kingdoms, all of these wonders, things we can't even imagine, all of that is in one piece in that it lives in this sleeping supercontinent uh, that once you have found the one piece is now available, is now there for you to find, no longer inaccessible at the bottom of the seafloor. And now it's a new adventure to go and find it. Like, I think that's a lot more fun than just, we found it, we're rich. <laughs> but rather, now untold riches and treasures and wonderments are, are open to us in our adventuring ways. And of course, it completely fucks up how the world government works. I imagine that they're going to get their ass beat before this anyways, but I, I don't imagine that it's going to be to the extent of, like, all of the corrupt marine officers and all of the self-serving royalty around the world and all of the horrible celestial dragons are all going to get wiped out simultaneously. I think that would be a little implausible. So instead, I think this revolutionary change where all of the oceans drain away is going to be what enables these connections and these people to be more empowered and yeah, it's going to throw the world kind of into chaos, but ultimately it's a chaos that deeply, deeply disadvantages the world government and deeply, deeply advantages anything new coming along, like the revolutionary army or anything. So what's the story then? Why, what, what happened to lead to this? Uh, basically, I think during the Void Century, the new world government wages a war against the Kingdom of D. We, we already understand this. Uh, widespread use of the super powerful ancient weapons causes the oceans to rise higher and higher. This is seen as very tragic. Whole nations sinking into the waves and perishing. Uh, scientists in the Kingdom of D predict that the water will eventually subside, which, you know, would kind of make sense uh, physically. <laughs> uh, but Joy Boy decides that the only way to defeat the world government is not to just kind of let things return to how they are with them in absolute power over the supercontinent, but instead to keep the world flooded and separated. So he created this giant plug at Raftel, and you might go, this doesn't make any sense physically either, but hey, it's hacky. <laughs> so I think he basically binds all of the oceans up with some massive hacky, maybe sacrificing himself in the process, 
that is connected to this one plug, okay? And and I think the one plug, thus, you know, you pull it out, the one piece comes out, all of the oceans start flooding in together. In the end, it kind of creates an all blue for a little bit for uh, dear old Sanji there. Or maybe maybe in the aftermath of that, there's going to be like one lake where the plug was and it's filled with every fish in the world. I don't know. All those details I haven't really thought of, but I think there's a lot of potential for fun stuff there. Uh, but yeah, yeah, he was able to plug up all of the oceans in the world using the One Piece. And the hope on his end is that now he has created this pirate, this idea of somebody who roams these giant seas, and he feels like this is actually his kind of long-term solution, his long-term hope of defeating the world government and restoring freedom to the world, is that pirates will rise up from each isolated island, they'll have rebellion in their heart, they'll, you know, have these adventures, they'll have these quests... And ultimately, they will arrive back here with the ability to take on the world government and to restore the world to how it was. Uh, and this has largely come to pass because, yeah, the entire age of piracy, uh, started by Joy Boy and then kicked into high gear by Roger, has been around getting to this final island and achieving Joy Boy's plan. Uh, but of course, the world government and pirates have also taken advantage of the world of isolated islands. Uh, you know, there's a lot of local tyrannies and places that are impoverished and going through all sorts of misery and the world government is trying to mitigate their damage from the rising flood tides and just escape this shared cruel fate. Uh, but Joy Boy accounted for this. That's why he left the plug removable. That in the end, he wanted that next generation, no matter how far away it was, to decide what to do. Uh, Roger's crew... Oh, you know what else? I bet Zoe, Zoesha, the giant elephant, is maybe the one that, like, put the plug in or something. And that's, like, the sin that he committed in the past. Ooh, I just thought of that. I wish I put it in the slides. <laughs> I don't know why I just thought of that. It was just, like, a, a sudden flash of that panel. I was thinking about other people that knew Joy Boy. Uh, so yeah, Zunesha, yeah, I bet Zunesha was also partially responsible for this flooding of the world. Anyways, so yeah, Roger Truon was like, nah, I don't think so. I think the world, the way it is, is ultimately better and safer. Uh, and this, of course, is probably also Shanks' ideology leading to potentially this conflict. But then Luffy's crew, and this, you know, leaves the question, why would Luffy want to drain the oceans? Uh, so I think his dream likely has something to do with people from all over the world coming together. That just fits his personality. Um, I've seen it phrased in some predictions as his dream is going to be a big party with everyone that he's met from all of the islands throughout their entire adventure. Uh, and I think that's a really good one because, you know, every One Piece arc ends with a big party. And so the whole of One Piece, I think, should end with the biggest party of all. And Oda loves showing everybody happy and celebrating and drinking and eating. Uh, so he would probably want to take the opportunity to show literally everybody through the entire series coming together, drinking and eating and celebrating. Uh, so, you know, with the oceans the way they are is impossible. And to be clear, it's not like I think Luffy's dream is I want to drain the ocean so this is possible. His dream is just that once I'm Pirate King... Everyone I know through my entire life will get together and have a party. And that's what they find so ostentatious. That's what they find so, you know, bold and funny. And then it just turns out that what the One Piece enables is having this sort of party. That everyone can now come together free of the, the tides and, you know, the red line and the calm belt and everything. And, and finally, <laughs> if we go way back to chapter one, what is it that is pissing Luffy off more than everything? That he can't swim. <laughs> and now with the supercontinent returned, he finally gets revenge for not being able to swim. Okay, that's my theory. We will see probably in five to ten years if this will come to bear. I will do an update at some point if there's evidence or counter evidence or anything that I think is relevant. Uh, but yeah, that's me. Uh, let me know what you think. Bye.